In this video, we'll take a look at a very useful data structure in Report Designer called Lists. We'll show you how to populate lists, how to reference items within, how to locate or find a value, and how to loop through a list. There are three functions that we can use to populate a list. Create List, Insert List, and Join List. We'll start with using the create list function to create a list of three free text items and we'll save that to a variable called test list. Internally, the list looks like this. Each item is entered into the list in the order that they were created. So item one is in position zero, item two is in position one, and item three is in position two. Now we'll look at creating a list using the insert function. The insert function can only add one item at a time, so this has to span three separate lines of code. The insert list function adds each item to the first position in the list, or position 0. It will then bump the remaining items down further in the list. Here's what it looks like internally. You can see that item 3 is in position 0, item 2 is in position 1, and item 1 is in position 2. Now we'll take a look at the join list function. Similar to the insert list function, you can only add one item at a time, so this will also span three lines of code. The major difference between the insert and join is that the join will append each item to the end of the list rather than inserting it in the first position. Internally, the data looks like this. The output is exactly the same as when we use the create list function, as each item was added to the end of the list. Item 1 is in position 0, item 2 in position 1, and item 3 in position 2. Now we'll take a look at referencing items within a list. Starting with the same list that we started with, we're now going to use the offset routine to extract each individual item from the list and save each one into a separate variable. The first thing we want to do is extract the very first item in the list. To do that, the first thing we need to do is go to the expression tab and navigate to our variable called test list. Next, we want to apply the operator called offset and reference the position number, which in this case is zero. Now we'll save the contents to a variable which we called first item. Next, we'll quickly do the same thing for items two and three. Now we have extracted all three elements within the list and have placed them in their own separate variables. Now we'll take a look at a technique to find or locate a value within a list. In order to locate an item within a list, the first thing we need to do is create a variable which stores the total number of items within a list. This is done in the string manipulation tab under format. And using the function called series count, it will save the number of elements within a list into a variable. In our example, we'll save the total number of elements to a variable, len, which is short for length. Next, we'll use the locate feature, which is under the string manipulation tab. This will use the variable which contains our list, that will be the source, and we have the option of either searching for a variable or a free text within the list. This will save the relative position into a variable.
The locate function will now attempt to look for the text within the list. If it finds the text, it will return the relative position within the list. If it is not found, it will return the total number of elements contained in the list. Now we'll create a simple if statement to set a flag variable to either found or not found. If the relative position returned from the locate function is less than the total number of elements in the list, then we know it has been found. In all other cases, it has not been found. In this example, the locate function will successfully find the text that we provided in position 2, and therefore will set our flag to found. The last topic that we'll take a look at is how to loop through a list. The first thing we want to do is populate our length variable with the number of elements within our list. Next, we want to populate our position variable with zero, as we want to start at the very first element in the list. Now we want to create our do loop. Instead of looping on a record or index, we now want to loop with a while condition. The condition for the while is while position is less than length. In this next line, we'll use the offset command to extract the element within the list, which is represented by the number in the position variable. For each iteration in the loop, the value variable will be initialized with the item in the list based on the position. This next line is critical. We want to increment the position counter by 1. Without this line, it will result in an infinite loop and your report will never finish. This loop doesn't carry out any particular function, but it does show you how to set up the basic structure. On the first pass, position equals 0, and the length is always equal to 3. So it will check is 0 less than 3? It is. On the second pass, position is now 1. Is 1 less than 3? It is. On the third pass, position is equal to 2, which is still less than 3. And on the very last one, it's going to now equal 3. And is 3 less than 3? It isn't. That's false, and that will end your do loop. Thanks for watching. Please check out our website for new and updated content. In addition, we also offer report writing services and online training.